superstar. This is the most beautiful building and wonderful event. Thanks, Kim. To Gordon and Elaine, all the best. Good luck, Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Gadigal Elder, Uncle Alan Manor, to give the welcome to country. Have you taken it? Welcome to Gadigal Country. Do you know our story? Welcome to Gadigal Land. Don't you bring your poison. Don't you bring your grog. Don't you bring your smallpox, sure to kill our mob. Don't you bring your justice. Don't you bring your jails. Don't you bring your armies, troopers on our trails. So welcome to Gadigal Land. Welcome to Gadigal Country. Welcome to Gadigal Land. Have you heard our history? Welcome to Gadigal Land. We don't need your convicts. We don't need your thieves. We don't need your squatters or your mates of peace. Don't you dam our rivers. Don't you fell our trees. Don't you carve our wilderness. Don't you net our seas. In a land where time stands still, in a land that's in a spell, every day, the day you came, is a day of rage, a day of rage. Welcome to Gadigal Land. Wino, wino, wino. Welcome to Gadigal Land. Wino, wino, wino. Majinja Naga, Wanja, Nadgadu. Baywari Naga Nawara Dei Aweri Demi Garawa Werma Baya Majinja Wa Always will be Gadigal Land. It's unfolding, you're unloading your high and mighty prison ships. We can live without your muskets, we can live without your guns. We can live without your cyanide. We can live without your rum. We can live without your gallows. We can do without your chains. We can do without your massacres, the sorrow and the pain. So welcome to Gadigal Land. Wano, wano, wano. Welcome to Wiradjuri Land. Welcome to Yorta Yorta Land. Welcome to Aranat Land. Welcome to Murnan Land. Welcome to Gurindji Land. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Kim McKay AO, Director and CEO of the Australian Museum, to give the official welcome. Thank you so much, and thank you, Uncle Alan, who of course was welcoming you from that wonderful song by Midnight Oil, welcome to Gadigal. And he delivered it beautifully. Thank you, Uncle Alan. Really appreciate it. It was so cool. And a special welcome tonight to all the elders and First Nations people who've joined us here. What a great mob are with us tonight. The brilliant uncles and aunties who we met earlier today and last night who've traveled so far to be with us because they shared their stories with us that are revealed in Unsettled. As you know, I'm Kim McKay, uh, the Director and CEO here, and it is my job and privilege to welcome each and every one of you to the opening of this very special exhibition, Unsettled. It's a special night to be here because we're able to celebrate this groundbreaking exhibition with all of you. I'd especially like to thank the New South Wales Government for their ongoing support of the museum and welcome our Minister for the Arts, 
and Aboriginal Affairs. The Honourable Don Harwin who's with us tonight along with his team and colleagues across the New South Wales State Government who are here and other major cultural institutions. There's someone I just want to call out on. Our former AM Director, Des Griffin, is with us tonight. He did so much to advance First Nations collections, experiences, understanding and education at the Australian Museum during his tenure in the 80s and, and around that time. So thank you, Des. I haven't seen you live. I also acknowledge the AM Trust President, David Armstrong, who is here tonight. He steadily steers the ship and provides solid support, along with all the <coughs> trustees here who are present, especially uh, the Alloway Gamal Roy woman, Larissa Barrett, who you'll hear from later. So thank you all. Many of you would be aware that this exhibition has been years in the making. And while it's certainly long overdue, we are so pleased to share it with you tonight and from tomorrow with all the people of New South Wales and other visitors to our state. The creation of the Unsettled Exhibition, which focuses, of course, on truth-telling, enabled the Australian Museum to reflect on its own history. As the first museum in the nation established in 1827, the Australian Museum is part of our country's colonial past. You can see the evidence in these sandstone walls. And we acknowledge the wrongs done to First Nations people, the continued custodians of the land on which the museum stands today. This was and always will be Aboriginal land. Yeah. As a trusted source in our community, the Australian Museum is committed to presenting scientific evidence and cultural truths derived through our research collections and First Nations people's traditional knowledge. This is why we believe Unsettled is one of the most important exhibitions in the Australian Museum's history. One that every Australian, if they can, should see. Because of this, we've made entry to Unsettled free of charge with the fantastic assistance of our partners, including the Balnaise Foundation, thank you, Neil and family, for your incredible support. The Australian Museum Foundation, under the leadership of both now Brian Hartsburg, previously Dick and Loxton, who contributed so much uh, to this exhibition. The great company IAS Logistics, whose team are here tonight, thank you for your support. To Reconciliation Australia, and then some legal firms who are taking this space very seriously, Ashurst, DLA Piper, and Gilbert and Tobin. And we're very pleased also, of course, to have ABC Sydney Radio as our media partner. Now, Unsettled's curator, Laura McBride, who is also now the director of First Nations of the museum, she's the first... Cheap truth telling at its best through Unsettled with her team, including Dr. Mariko Smith, Assistant Curator of First Nations at the Australian Museum. What a time! <laughs> As we all know, First Nations voices have often been left out of Australia's foundation story. But we decided to present Unsettled from a First Nations perspective. Why should we speak for others when they can speak for themselves? Right on. Throughout the exhibition, our curators have sourced historical records to reinforce these First Nations stories told. This includes referencing colonial records and acknowledging that history is of course told from multiple perspectives. Some of the stories that you will find out about tonight will be unsettling as they present another view of history. The history that many of us would have learned at school omitted these stories. But it is only through education and considering different perspectives that we will move towards greater understanding in our community. I'd like to thank the hundreds of contributions by First Nations peoples across the country, as I said, many of whom are with us this evening. Thank you 
for sharing your lived experiences with us. Now, while this exhibition may make some feel unsettled, I hope it sparks discussion and generates understanding as a nation so we can move forward as there is much healing to be done. And I hope that this Australian Museum here in Sydney will become a, a safe place for those discussions, for debates. We can have different perspectives, but we can come together with our shared future. So I'd now like to invite the Minister for Arts and Aboriginal Affairs, Don Howard, to the stage to speak and officially open the exhibition. Don. History matters. Telling the truth matters. Like, for instance, where on what was, is, and always will be Gadigal land. I pay my respects to elders past and present mm. and those who will emerge in the future and thank them for their custodianship of country. When we acknowledge country, it's a sign that we've heard the truth. We've heard it, but most importantly, we've understood it. Understanding the immense sense of loss that so many Aboriginal people feel deep within them is immensely important for those of us whose ancestors are from somewhere else. Part of Aboriginal people's sense of loss is the way that their narratives were for so long written out of Australian history. My schooling was in the 1970s. I was taken to Kurnell. I was shown rock carvings. I saw bark paintings and watched dancing, but not much else. History matters. We need a well-informed nation who understands where it's come from so that it can make better choices uh, and that will enable us to take us forward to a greater future. Telling the truth helps us understand the lasting impacts of the past on Australian people. Oh, I'm sorry. Telling the truth helps us understand the lasting impacts of the past on Aboriginal people. The Australian Museum's Unsettled Exhibition brings together documentary evidence, large-scale artworks, immersive experiences, and never-seen-before objects for its from its collection to write Aboriginal people back into our nation's history. It prevents, I'm sorry, it presents a clearer and fuller picture of who we are and what has come before us. I believe that the opportunity to, for visitors from around Australia to view unsettled and hearing the truth and seeing the truth is the key to making some of the hard decisions that we will need to make to close the appalling gap between the lived experience of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Australians. This ambition is not without its challenges for any museum. I can well understand why the Australian Museum feels a special responsibility in this work of truth-telling. Fundamentally, this is a museum whose strength has always laid in natural science and history. Its extraordinary collection of First Nations cultural objects from Australia and the Pacific, uh, right through to the 21st century, sits perhaps uncomfortable, and uncomfortably, I should say, next to animal and plant specimens it has collected too. But that reflects this museum's institutional heritage. Objects can be powerful, and I'm sure Lisa Havler from the Powerhouse, Adam Lindsay from uh, City Living Museums and the State Archives and Records Authority, 
and Kim McKay will tell you there is history in every object. And the fragment of the grindstone in this exhibition from Cuddy Springs near Bawarana that you'll see is extraordinarily powerful. It's also internationally significant and it's an immensely important statement about country and culture. This exhibition is also the story of Aboriginal people. It reflects their oral tradition. The museum has also contributed more than $350,000 to commission new cultural works by Indigenous artists and knowledge holders. This will serve to illuminate historical truth alongside the historical record. Our view of history needs to accommodate complexity and nuance. It will need to be uncomfortable when it presents narratives like these. We should feel unsettled. We need this to sit beside and inform, but not cancel, the story of our achievements as a nation. We must be able to nuance the good with the bad so we have the complete picture, even with Cook and Macquarie. I'd like to thank the many people who are involved in the creation of this very significant exhibition. It's a vast undertaking, and the whole team, led by Kim McKay, McKay and Laura McBride, have worked incredibly hard. I'm really absolutely delighted with the result. I do also want to acknowledge that some very interesting essays written by Fiona Foley and Elizabeth Farrelly have informed some of what I've had to say tonight. <coughs> Unsettled will have done its job if providing access to these unsettling truths helps promote healing and respect. I encourage every Australian to see it and make up their own mind. But my hope is that we will engage audiences and ultimately it will advance reconciliation in Australia. It's my enormous pleasure to declare Unsettled officially open. Thank you. Ladies. Now it's my great honour to introduce undoubtedly the woman of the moment, the indomitable Laura McBride, Director of First Nations. Cook is often celebrated as the founding father of Australia, 
with hero-like status to non-Indigenous Australians. But he represents the opposite to us First Nations peoples, a symbol of destruction and death, <coughs> pain and suffering. Curating a truthful show about why these differences exist that meets the needs of both these audiences was never going to be straightforward. But with the support of the First Nations team and after discussions with many community members, we agreed to take this on and now we are so very happy that we did. To develop this exhibition in a culturally appropriate way and accurately represent the views of First Nations peoples on the Cook anniversary, we undertook community consultation to define what themes and topics we would cover. We spoke to many individuals and communities and received over 805 formal responses to the consultation. Significantly, these consultations made it clear that First Nations people did not want to see another show about Cook. He is but a small footnote in Australia's true history. Instead, we needed to take this opportunity for truth-telling. The consultation had three highest-ranking categories colonisation and its effects, to detail Australia's origin and foundation, and addressing the false constructed history that is pervasively shared in society. The most common specific responses were invasions, wars, massacres, genocide, assimilation, dispossession, resistance, resilience and survival. We had our content set by the communities for what will be named this important exhibition. The First Nations staff, in partnership with Indigenous X, spent time brainstorming a title that could capture the importance, context and content being covered. We decided on the name Unsettled. This term has many connotations and in the context of this exhibition they are everywhere. Australia was not peacefully settled. Our history is unresolved. Relationships between First Nations peoples and Australians is uneasy. And after 250 years, newcomers still have a turbulent and unbalanced relationship with the natural environment within which they live. Truth-telling about Australia's past is an incredibly important process for understanding who we are now and how we came to be as a nation. Truth-telling can be confronting, but the process can be powerful. Grief can make way for healing, and healing unites people who were once divided. It is time we stop pretending that meaningful change can happen in a system that is grounded in denial. Until historic inequities are addressed, the gap between Indigenous peoples and non-Indigenous Australians will only continue to widen. Museums like ours have the opportunity to be at the centre of this process, as we are publicly trusted sources of information and knowledge. This requires a spirit of inclusiveness and a commitment to build strong relationships between First Nations peoples and collecting institutions which promote principles of Indigenous agency and self-determination. I applaud the leadership shown by the museum's executive team and our trustees for providing First Nations people with a platform to amplify our voices and rebalance the narrative. We thank you genuinely for this. We work with over 130 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples to interpret the topics set out in the consultation, many of whom have joined us tonight. Every one of you understood the importance of this exhibition and the stories within it. We know that our communities and old people have been waiting a long time for these stories to be told. I cannot thank you all individually tonight, but you know how grateful I am to you all for sharing your knowledges and stories with us, but also for caring about and supporting us in the development of Unsettled. I hope we have made your ancestors, families, communities and you proud. Building exhibitions is a team effort. I thank our brilliant Unsettled team for the hard work, perseverance and patience on the development of the show. A thank you to my First Nations colleagues who assisted us across the project and gave valuable feedback and critical insight. 
I would also like to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of my Ewan colleague and assistant curator, Mariko Smith. Maruba. privilege to develop, curate and now present Unsettled to the public. This is how we will build a better shared future, together. I'd like to sincerely thank the people that made that possible. Our major supporter, the Val Naves Foundation and our other partners who have enabled us to make this show free to the public. We pay our respects and dedicate the Unsettled exhibition to the people and other beings who keep the law of this land to the elders and traditional owners of all the knowledges, places and stories in this exhibition, and to the ancestors and old people for their resilience and guidance. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce the Gurungal Murren Dancers, led by Raymond Timbury, a strong Bidjigal Dharawal man, who made the important and amazing death spear with Joel Deves for the Unsettled Exhibition in dedication to Pemaway and the late, great Uncle Laddie Timbri. Gurungul Marani. Ah! <laughs> 
before we continue, we're always like um, um, I like to say with our Langa. Welcome everyone. My name is Raymond Jimbri, country bridge from Daru. Um, I got pretty lucky in giving this opportunity because of my grandfather. Now, we have been really strong teachers in all of our lives that put us in this position where we are today. If it wasn't for our elders, we had that struggle for the last 200 or so years. Um, what happened is, you know, we wouldn't be existing today. You know, so, as you can see, we've got all our beautiful children here with us tonight. Everything that we do is a reflection on our children. We had amazing role models growing up in life. And if we look back in history, we've got the best role models in the world. If we inspire to be like our ancestors, like our old people, then we become pure. And if we become pure, we're able to walk in two worlds. And that's what we need to teach our young ones, our little ones, our babies. Now it's a struggle, but at the same time we follow our culture and we look into that. We've got our mother, we've got our strength, we've got our power, our spirit is strong. And tonight we're going to represent that spirit. So welcome all. This one here is from my country, our Nepal country, country, it's done country. Uh, so there's different styles and different steps from my country, Nepal, Garagiela, it's done country. Ready to go? This one here, another song one from out there. Represents our skin groups out there that keep us strong. Back in the in the bad times, for us to be still here today, because it always was and always will be. So give thanks to our old people out there, especially that old Jumbo out there. This one, Gerald, I clap along if you want. This next dance was a dance taught me by Mamba Warren Foster Water the Lake in the far south coast. This one is Yarra Yarra. He also passed out the dance full of money. 
that welcome dance. This is Naren Naren, our live bird. He's the boss of language, boss of song. He can speak all of our languages and sing all of our songs. To this day, he still holds our language in the country. So we just dance to pay our respects to Naren Naren. Professor Larissa Barrett, a 
Australian Museum trustee to speak on behalf of our trustees, Larissa. And thank you, Uncle Alan Madden, for your welcome and reminding us yeah. how long it is that country, song and culture um, have been integral to this place that we're in tonight. Um, it's also appropriate to also, as part of that, acknowledge the generosity with which our elders share this land with us and pay my respects to all of the elders and community people in the room who've shared their knowledge so generously with us. And I just want to make a special acknowledgement to Uncle Max Harrison, who I've known since I was 11, and he's kept me on the straight and narrow since then. So thank you, Uncle Max. It's really wonderful to have you here. Tonight I am so proud to be a trustee of a museum who has had the vision to bring an exhibition like Unsettled to the public. I'm proud to be here on behalf of the trustees of Kid Lakai and her team and um, to also uh, be speaking after the minister who I know has supported what's happening at the museum and has a genuine um, heartfelt responsibility for the arts, culture and Indigenous issues of this place. The exhibition... <laughs> Minister Harlan's work in this space has, has been um, phenomenal and we need to acknowledge that. The result of this, this, this exhibition unsettled is a result of a community consultation process that means that First Nations voices are central and foremost in the exhibition. This should not seem like a radical idea in a country that is home to the world's oldest living culture in 2021 as we consider the importance of truth telling and the power of Indigenous knowledges. But the relationship between Indigenous people and collecting institutions has been long and fraught. Collecting institutions in the past have been complicit in the process of colonisation through the appropriation of artefacts and the holding of human remains, a sense of superiority and entitlement has been fostered, a right to take and own, to, to study and to draw conclusions. Such conclusions were imbued with bias and often co-opted into telling nationalistic narrative that idealised the actions and achievements of the colonisers while excluding First Nations perspectives, knowledges, voices and experience. In this way, museums have often amplified the perspectives of the dominant colonial culture. Colonial narr narratives inevitably continue to be challenged by First Nations experiences and perspectives. And nowhere is this clearer than the perpetual conversation every Australia Day about whether to change the day or not. First Nations people have long called it Invasion Day or Survival Day to be clear about our view of what the national holiday means from our perspective. Whether to change the day or keep it is an ongoing conversation that reflects the extent to which the story that Australia wants to tell about itself is still so polarising, so unsettled. The anniversary of Captain Cook's navigation and the mapping of the east coast of Australia threatened to be another moment in which competing narratives would collide. Cook didn't stay and set up a colony, but his role in mapping, naming and claiming meant he has become a mythic figure in the story of the colonising of Australia. Yet, as he sailed up the coast, he noted in his diaries the disinterest First Nations peoples had in engaging with him. They want for nothing, he noted, as he sailed away. And that's the storyline that continues today. The community consultations undertaken by the First Nations team, led by Laura McBride here at the Australian Museum, resulted in an exhibition that barely mentions Cook at all. It redirects from one moment back to the 65,000 plus years of local cultures and their experiences since 1788. Focus, it says, on our wisdom, 
celebrate our resilience and our survival. Learn more about this country by listening to what we have to say about it. Unsettled also challenges the traditional relationship between First Nations peoples and collecting institutions. And while much has been said about how unsettling some of the exhibition will be for some audience members, as a First Nations woman, when I walked through the doors, I never felt so welcomed in an institution like this. The exhibition's privileging of the perspectives and views of First Nations peoples is redefining the conversation a museum can have with the people who walk into it, whose objects they own and possess. Not only can a person look, learn and listen and deepen their understanding, they can do so knowing they are engaging in authentic First Nations voice and vision. This paradigm shift would not be possible without the vision of First Nations staff. That the Australian Museum has backed the powerful yet innovative approach of Laura McBride and her team as they have developed and presented the highlights that impact on First Nations people um, in this exhibition. It shows what the sector is capable of when it allows those voices to lead. This exhibition shows two, yes, more people, First Nations people in the sector. The exhibition shows two parallel agendas that First Nations people and their communities have in relation to collecting institutions to decolonise the, the place, spaces that have in the past sought to define us and our culture, but to also, at the same time, assert our sovereignty, our identity and our voice. Unsettled does this in a way that isn't confronting or accusatory, but rather says, sit with me a while, listen and learn. On the eve of Reconciliation Week, Unsettled is a powerful way to say, let's learn together so we can be ambitious about what a shared future might hold. It is now my great privilege to invite poet Rob Waters, a Gomorrah man, to the stage for a very special reading of his poem, The Unsettling. ever be known in this place has felt our footsteps. This place has heard our voices, old voices and little ones too, in the languages that she herself gifted us. We told the story of that first sunrise. We told the story of those campfires way up beyond the Milky Way. We told the story about how our father, the creator, looked down upon the earth. He saw that she was beautiful, and then they fell in love. From their love, all things were created. And by their love, we lived happily ever until. Because now we have a story of the unsettling. We tell a story of when we saw the sails. We saw the signs. We saw you coming. We saw our warriors stand upon the beaches, spears in hand and on rocky shores across the land. We saw you coming. So then we lit the fires. There were warnings, true, of darker times ahead we knew just what the sails had brought here to our mother. And even though in history books some people say that it was Cook that on the island came and took possession, our old ones in the Straits, well they say he didn't come ashore that day. 
to claim the East Coast all the way from south to north, including all the harbours, rivers, islands, together with all the bays. To me, I say that it seems to be like more than just a mere indiscretion. And then he went away. But they came back. In 1788, just after the invasion, what Contention would write? That the unprovoked outrages committed upon them by unprincipled individuals among us caused the evils that we had experienced. I suppose unprovoked outrages is a much nicer way of saying massacre. Don't you dare call them dispersals. They were massacres at Appen, at Bathurst, at Myall Creek, Slaughterhouse Creek, Mount Dispersion. There were massacres in every single corner of this country. Have you ever wondered why the soil looks so red? We have the blood of our warriors inside of us. We did not lay down and die. From Pemaway to Windradine, the day of morning protest, to the Freedom Rides, the 10th Embassy, to this, here, tonight, we have armed our words with the spears that their old people hand to us in memory. And we will tell their truth. Because this place here now feels our footsteps. It holds our stories. And it will hear our voices. We just need you to quiet down now. Come sit down with us and listen.